This is part one of a one hour and 40 minute recorded Twitch stream from the 16th of April 2020. In the session we discuss various MPLS building blocks from a design perspective. We begin by working through a whiteboard sketch of a basic MPLS network design and explain the various components. In the following parts and videos we will demonstrate building the design out further using diagram tools and also use a small MPLS lab to illustrate some of the key design points and considerations. Check out the video description for subsequent parts of the discussion and live demos on P, PE, CE and VPN root reflectors. We hope you enjoy the video and if you do please let us know by providing a like, comment or telling anyone you know who may be interested. Thank you. Good evening everyone, uh, thanks for joining the stream tonight. We're going to talk a little bit about MPLS VPN design fundamentals. The last sort of two or three hours I've actually been trying to throw, t throw together a lab environment as well. So we'll, we'll maybe dip in and out of the, you know, the lab to demonstrate a few things. But what this session is really about is if I go back one uh, slide, Somebody contacted me uh, asking if I was able to do a session to explain the different building blocks of MPLS networks. So when we say the different building blocks of MPLS networks, the reason that he, that he asked for that was because he said that he was working for a telco or an ISP and he configured mainly PE nodes, CE devices at customer sites and done some maintenance on P nodes and things like that. So he knows how to configure it and troubleshoot the task in hand that he was working on, but he wasn't entirely sure about the, how the whole MPLS network stack fits together. So the stuff that you see over the left hand side of the slide is effectively the MPLS stack and we're going to try and cover Bearing in mind we've only got uh, an hour, but we'll try and cover as much about these different protocols as we can in regards to understanding how they interoperate and how you see it laid out on the screen to the left hand side where it says stack. That's basically the order of how you need to think about deploying an MPLS network. So on the left hand side we've got the protocols that you use and then if you look on the right hand side in the red writing those are the typically the devices that are included. So the P which is the provider, the CE which is the customer edge and the PE which is the provider edge and we'll go into that in a lot more detail um, shortly. So moving forward into the presentation what we're going to do is just talk a little bit about um, how you would design an MPLS network and how you would design an MPLS network would be let me transition to this so what you would what you would do when you're designing any network really is you would gather like customer requirements and that will be wide and varied but if you're working in the service provider space I would imagine that y you'll have a good knowledge of some of the protocols and I guess the point that I'm trying to make here is we, we, we don't just typically go into visual mode. We, we normally have like meetings, whiteboarding sessions, things like that. And I've drawn up a, a conceptual MPLS network here that may or may not be the result of a discussion. So what I mean when I say conceptual, I'm going to use, what colour will I use? I'll use green to highlight anything that I'm, you know, I'm talking about in the diagram. Hopefully you should see a hand-drawn sketch, which is one I prepared earlier. And I'm just going to talk about the different components at a high level that you might find in an MPLS network. And then we'll move into some diagrams which are a bit nicer, which are created in Visio. And I'll talk about how you could sort of build the diagrams out. And then if we've got time at the end, I'll, I've got a lab environment that I'll switch to and just show you some stuff. So what we're going to do is we're going to concentrate initially on the red and the black nodes and talk about, and also the, the gold node. 
So we'll start from the outside in with the PE nodes. Hopefully you're able to see the annotation mark up here. The PE nodes are the provider edge nodes. So that's where your the edge of your service provider network sits. And the responsibility of this part of the um, MPLS network is to effectively be the ingress point from the customer. So you're receiving traffic from the customer at this node, so the provider edge node. Now, when on the provider edge node, there's a couple of different main configuration components on the PE. So if we mark them out, it's got two main tasks, segmentation um, and label switching. And the, to, to explain what those are, I don't know what the, the skill level of the audience is. If you, whilst I'm talking, if you could just put into the chat what your level of experience is with MPLS and service provider networks, and that can keep me on track as to what. So do you understand what VRFs are, what MPLS LDP is, and, and why it is used? And I'll, in, in the meantime, I'll just keep explaining it. So the segmentation part is you probably, if you're on this, it's quite an advanced session that we're doing here. So you're probably familiar with VRFs. And a VRF is effectively a way of creating a routing instance for a specific customer to allow for things like overlapping IP space, segmentation and security. So the only way that you would be able to communicate between two VRFs um, is if you purposely leak the routes between the two VRFs and uh, or if you traversed another device like a firewall. So if you were in VRF A as customer A and I've got a diagram on this uh, later on and I can show you in the in the lab environment. But if I'm if I'm customer one and my VRF on the customer on the provider network, sorry, is VRF A and then there's customer two which is in VRF B. Although they come into the same they might come into the same provider edge router, they're not able to talk to each other. Uh, and that's that's not possible unless as a one of the aforementioned things is completed. The if we move on to into the middle of the network on the P nodes. So the P nodes are the provider nodes and they really talk to the provider edge only on this side from a functionality perspective. So core facing ports talk from the PE to the P nodes. We don't, the P nodes don't have any VRF configuration. They don't have any BGP configuration and they don't have any customer configuration or any knowledge of routes from customers. And this is what we call a BGP free core. It will probably become apparent why we why that's beneficial as we move through the presentation. And then we also have root reflectors at the top and the root reflectors service various different uh, tasks. So VPN V4, VPN V6, root reflectors, which to some extent do contain the customer routes, but you have to go looking for them. But they do again, the root reflectors don't have VRF configuration. The only nodes that have VRF configuration are the PE nodes. And then of course, at the edge, we have the, the customer edge stuff, which is the, the are, are the devices which are configured for the customer on the customer site um, on their network and they have the the, the you know the, the capability to configure those or the service provider may configure those. This concludes part one of MPLS VPN building blocks. Please click the link in the description for part two where we will speak about 
layer 1 to 3 design and formulating diagrams in your tool of choice.